Welcome back to another exciting Unreal Engine tutorial series. In this short series, I'll go over how to clean up a file from 3ds Max to be used in Unreal Engine. For official information from Epic Games and for best practices, I'd recommend you go to the Unreal Engine documentation site or the Unreal Online Learning Portal has some really helpful content that could help out uh, even further. I'm not a pro with 3ds Max, so if you have any questions about that program, I'd recommend you check out uh, their forums and their uh, documentation. So, uh, let's hop right in. I found this project file on TurboSquid. Uh, it's free by Lip1996, uh, and this was modeled about 10 years ago, um, and it wasn't created for real-time rendering or real-time visualization. So I'm going to show you how to clean up some of the things in this file um, so we can use this in Unreal with some pretty good lighting. So I went ahead and I uh, downloaded the file and opened it, and we can Take a look around, see what we got. We have uh, some lights, these Omni lights floating around here. We have some cameras, a whole lot of geometry, and it looks like the geometry actually has materials on it as well. You can see the floor is actually a little bit reflective and there's like, it's supposed to be a wood material here. Right off the bat, we can see that there's gonna be some geometry issues, like uh, these faces are being coplanar. Uh, if I select just this polygon, you can see that there's a little bit of Z fighting going on. So uh, I'll talk about how to address that issue but this will be more apparent in Unreal Engine once we import this file. So let's take a look around. There's uh, this uh, main club space. Uh, there's this upstairs area, this little uh, bar. There's um, these upstairs rooms, but I'm only gonna really be concerned with this just for the sake of this tutorial. So uh, I'm gonna unhide everything and I'm using the Datasmith exporter plugin. If you don't have it already, uh, go to the Unreal Engine website and you can download this exporter for free for 3ds Max, SketchUp, or Revit. Uh, this is extremely versatile and it saves a ton of time when you're exporting from any of these files. I'm using 4.24 and this is 3ds Max version 2019. So I'm gonna call this, um, let's call it Club Demo DS for Datasmith. Export visible objects. It uh, looks like some of these objects have some UV issues. I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. I'm just going to hop right in. I made a uh, architecture sample project. Uh, this is a blank project, and I added starter content as well so we can use that when we bring the model in. I don't need this. Uh, I don't need this lighting. Um, just get rid of some of these things. And then let's hit the Datasmith button at the top. If you have the importer installed, you'll see that button. And choose our file and import. I'm going to make a Datasmith folder just to keep things nice and clean. Great. So the nice thing about uh, Datasmith files is they include geometry, materials, textures, lights, cameras, and animations. I don't have any animations, obviously, in this ArcVis project, so I'm going to keep that unchecked. But I do want to bring everything else in. And it actually um, creates light maps, uh, the UVs that were not created in 3ds Max. And we can actually choose the minimum and maximum size resolution if we would like. And this is actually based on the size of the geometry that we import. So I'm going to keep this uh, relatively low. Let's do uh, 32 and 64. And we can bump that up later if we need to. I'm going to go ahead and import. And here we are. It's going to be compiling shaders for a moment, but we can see that it all came in correctly. And let's start looking at some of these issues that we have in this project. So right off the bat, if we look at this geometry, there's definitely a lot of Z fighting, and it's way more apparent than it was previously. You'll notice, too, that all of these walls are one object. If I move just this, you can see it's, it's really the, the exterior of the entire structure. Uh, that's not what I want, so I'll show you how to fix that. Next, I, I noticed the uh, texture stretching here. It looks like there's some sort of like concrete material. Uh, here it looks too large and uh, rather pixelated, and here it's stretched vertically. Over here, I don't even know what's going on. Um, so that'll be something that we focus on, and we'll definitely resolve that issue. And let's take a look at some of these other objects. Um, if I go to the starter content and add a material to the floor and then add it here, okay. Yeah, we can see that the UVs are um, definitely not scaled the same. Um, if I actually open the cylinder, 
uh, go to the UV channels, we can see how it built the UV map here. Um, and there is a UV map, and then this UV channel 1 is the light map that was generated on import. But we need all of the UVs to be scaled the same amount, uh, which they're currently not. So we'll fix that in 3DS as well. And let's also look at this cove light. I noticed that this is actually merged along with all of these other coves as well. I'm not really sure what the artist's intent was for a lot of the things in this project. Uh, so I'm going to go under the assumption that um, their, their artistic decisions are relatively final, but we're just going to be augmenting and optimizing some of the stuff that they created. So we're not going to be uh, adding our own lights or anything. We're just going to go off of uh, all of these lights that they have here. I'm not sure how this cove light is supposed to work in like the real world, but we'll just we'll just roll with it. We'll just take it and make it look good. Speaking of lights, uh, let's look at the exposure. Um, it looks very bright back here and then really dark in some areas. Uh, I always like to go to the exposure in the view mode setting, uncheck game setting so it's just fixed at a static exposure amount, and you'll see that it is actually very overexposed. So um, let's select some of these lights and see what's going on. Okay, um, 150 candelas. Uh, yeah, they're all the same. You know, those are even brighter. That's why it looks so blown out over here. Let's, let's turn all of these down to, let's say, four candelas. And we'll see how that looks later. Uh, I personally don't really like to use Omni lights, uh, point lights at all. Um, if you think about it in the real world, I rant about this for days, uh, there is no such thing as a point light in reality. The closest analog would be the sun, right? But that's just an emissive sphere. Um, there, there's no case where you would ever have an omni light like this, maybe in like the middle of a light bulb, but that would still be, um, that would still cast shadows from the, from the bulb itself and so on. But right here, certainly, these shouldn't be points. Um, one thing we could do is we could set a radius to these and then uh, add a length to it um, and then uh, rotate it so it's more of like a beam, something like that. That's one way we could resolve this issue. Um, however, since this is one long beam, I would rather add a rectangular light that we can put in here. And this will be um, much easier for us to work with and, and much much easier for us to control as we move forward. So let's set the width to a low value. Length is rather long. It does need to be perfect. I'm just uh, trying to rough this in for now and just make it so we have something that looks pretty good. I like to keep the attenuation uh, much lower than the defaults. Um, it was casting light much farther than I prefer. I usually want this to almost just barely kiss the ground, but still reach all the extents of the light actor itself. Um, that should be pretty good. Let's duplicate that to the other side. Perfect, and then we'll bring one over here. And then one more for the bar itself. I suppose we could do the same thing for all of the cove lights, um, but just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm only gonna worry about these larger lights that we have that are casting most of the light in the scene itself. And we could, uh, we could spend a lot of time um, fine tuning this, these details and we may come back to them later. Um, but for now, I at least just want something in here so we can get a good idea of the style that the artist is going for. Now, since we have these in place, uh, we can delete these uh, point lights that we don't need. And since these uh, came in with the datasmith file, they're actually linked to the file itself. 
So it's asking if we want to break that reference by deleting them, and I do. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, let's let's uh, modify these together. I'm going to hit Control G to group them, so we can select all of them at the same time. Set the barn angle to let's see, 60, 75. I want a bit of splash on this back, but I don't want it to be too aggressive. Yeah, maybe maybe 85 might be better. Yeah. Barn door length, five, two. There we go. That's pretty good. We'll get like a nice contact shadow here. That'll be cool fall off. Now, I never really like to use light color unless it's for a very deliberate reason. So I'm going to use temperature instead and set these to, I don't know, 5,000, something that looks rather realistic. Um, same for these. Um, these are set with light color. Let's set that to the default. Move the temperature to 8,000 maybe, 9,000, 6,000, 2,000? No, that'll do. <laughs> and attenuation, let's make that 200 so it's not casting this colored light everywhere in the scene. Yeah, that's better. And then these two lights up here, these are pretty aggressive. Um, I'm not sure if, if they intend for these to be parts of light fixtures. Maybe there's like cove lighting. Maybe these are actually emitting that light. That might be kind of cool. Um, and let's set this down to 300. Now let's do 250. Default that. Yeah, forgot that too. Perfect. All right, so it looks very dark in here now, um, but that's all right. We haven't built our lighting yet. Uh, I'm going to save all um, since we imported this whole Datasmith file with all of the geometry and lights. Uh, we're only just now saving that. I should have done that much sooner. And I actually uh, don't want these lights over here in this part of the project. Uh, hide that. I'm not really concerned with optimizing this area right now. Um, might come back to it in the future. We'll see if anyone's interested in that. Feel free to let me know. We can revisit that and unhide everything. And this is getting better. Um, that's that's a good first step. We've optimized some lights and we've addressed some of these issues. I'd like to point out too that all of the geometry and lighting and all of that stuff, all of the things we're going to address in 3ds Max, these can also be addressed in SketchUp, Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, whatever 3D modeling program you're using. Uh, my personal preference is 3ds Max, so um, that's just me. Uh, if you have any questions about how to do this in other 3D programs, I'd be happy to address that for you as well. So in part two, we'll go back to 3ds Max and we'll actually optimize uh, some of this geometry and then re-import and build our lighting.